Hi there, I'm Mike MacArthur, and this is another episode of Librarian Learns. This is the series where I take a look at some local Oshkosh history that I've wondered about myself or someone has asked me about. As always, if you like these videos and want to see more of them, hit like, hit subscribe, share them with your friends, uh, yell out your window that you want more. I'm sure I'll eventually get word. So, let's get started. A topic of perpetual interest is the city's long and colorful history in the brewing industry. And if ever I have a question about a person or a place or a tavern or a ale or a lager or a hop that came through Oshkosh, uh, there's one person that I ask, and that is Lee Reiherzer, an avid home brewer and member of the Society of Oshkosh Brewers. Lee has been writing about all things beer and Oshkosh since about 2010 on his blog, The Oshkosh Beer Blog. He's also authored several books on the topic, The Breweries of Oshkosh, Their Rise and Fall, that came out in 2012 that he co-wrote with Ron Aiken. And his latest book, Winnebago County Beer, A Heady History, came out last year and is still available for purchase. Both books are available at the library. For this episode, I'm going to let Lee do most of the talking. He has a prettier voice than me. He is going to take us on a short walking tour of what used to be the heart of the Oshkosh brewing industry, the Southside Brewing District. Let's get started. So we're out here on South Main and just above 16th, right in the middle of where the brewing district uh, basically was. Uh, so Lee, what are we looking at or what would we have seen? So if you were here in 1865, you would have seen a brewery here. You would have seen a brewery right across the street. Uh, later on, a few years later, you would see another brewery up the street. After, between 1865 and 1972, this entire part of town, which was called the Brooklyn side of town, Uh, the people on the north side of town called that side of town Brooklyn, uh, and it's a nickname that kind of stuck. And they got that from it, the, the arrangement of these two parts of the city, the, the north of the river and the south of the river, kind of uh, reminded them of the, re the arrangement in New York. Uh, so the, they were it was called Brooklyn, the Brooklyn side of town. town was filled with breweries, malt houses, bottling plants, saloons. This is where people came. Uh, after the Civil War to make beer. And there's a couple reason they reasons they did that. Uh, land was cheap and it was open down here. And also they had access to water right there, which was a big thing for these breweries because uh, they would do cold fermentation. So they would chop blocks of ice off the, off the lake and haul it into the basements of their breweries so they could cold condition their beer with that, with that cold ice. Mm -hmm. If this was 1865, what would we have been looking at right now? Right behind us, Mike, there would have been a two-story uh, wood frame building, large building. Uh, and that was the Horn and Schwamm Brooklyn Brewery. That was the first brewery built on the south side of town. The families, the Horn and Schwamm families lived on the second floor, the top level, and the brewery was below. And as you might imagine, a wood frame uh, a brewery is kind of a dangerous place. They had no electricity in it, so it was lit by candles. And to create the amount of energy and heat they needed to actually brew beer, they used to have open fires within that building. Mm -hmm. So these are dangerous places. Uh, they had a couple of major accidents here. Uh, 1872, one of the brewers was crossing over the brew kettle, slipped and fell into the brew kettle, scalded himself to death. Uh, and in 1878, the building actually burned to the ground. Once that building burned to the ground, they had to build a new brewery. So the brick building you see behind us, that was the brewery they built. And that opened up in 1879 as Horn and Schwalm's second Oshkosh brewery. Uh, at the time, that was one of the most technically advanced breweries in the state. It had mechanical refrigeration. It actually had uh, steam heat in it and steam power. Uh, so this was, a, this was a, a pretty big deal for Oshkosh, and this eventually grew into the largest brewery in Oshkosh uh, prior to the 1900s. It's 
So at this point, we're entering kind of the time of the Oshkosh Brewing Company. Right. So in 1894, three of Oshkosh's large breweries, the Glatz Brewery, uh, the Kinzel Brewery, which is on the north side of the river, and then Horn and Schwalm's Brooklyn Brewery, merged to form the Oshkosh Brewing Company. And in 1911, those, that Oshkosh Brewing Company built a new brewery that was located right on this site. It was an enormous building. It was the biggest brewery ever uh, to, to make beer in Oshkosh, and that was the producer of Chief Oshkosh Beer, which was sold throughout the Midwest. The Horn and Schwalm Brewery was still there, but during the time that the Oshkosh Brewing Company actually had that big brewery here, Horn and Schwalm's old building was used as offices and a bottling house for the brewery. The brewery lasted until 1971. It went out of business in 1971. It stood until 1986 when it was demolished. So here we are in front of what was originally August Horn's house. Yeah, right. So August Horn was co-owner of Horn and Schwalm's Brooklyn Brewery, and then he was the first president of the Oshkosh Brewing Company. And Horn was a beloved character in Oshkosh. He spent a lot of time in saloons, and people used to love to see him coming because they knew he was a soft touch. And he used to go on these epic sprees where he would go from saloon to saloon, and, and people would follow him around. Uh, there's one... Uh, recorded thing, uh, spree that he made in 1895, where over the course of just a couple of days, he hit 41 saloons and bought over 600 free beers for people at the bar. So, you know, people like to see August Horn walk into the bar. Yeah. Where are the ah, so much history. There's just too much for one episode. We're breaking this one up into two and check back soon for part two of the tour, which should be dropping in the next couple of weeks here. As always, if you have comments, corrections, stories, uh, let me know in the comments below or using the links in the description. And with that, I'll see you next time.